Today I'm going to talk about Jazz Lab, which is a band in a box alternative. Now, the last video I did was about Chord Pulse, which is another band in a box alternative. And that program has certain features which I believe are really useful for, for songwriters and um, composers because it's, it allows you to, to um, sample different chord types. For example, if, if you want to, uh, uh, if you want to put a, a D chord in there and then you, let's say you want to turn it into a seventh or an augmented chord or, 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 or that kind of thing, you can, you can do that very easily just by clicking on a button. Now this program, Jazz Lab, is actually, I would say, more sophisticated than, than Chord Pulse and it allows you to do some very unique things. And uh, one of those is that uh, you can use thousands of the, the Yamaha style files which, which are available online. And the other thing is that you can, you can also import uh, the Band in a Box songs. So it, it's got you know, potential to, to be able to use all kinds of uh, different songs and you can create your own. The amazing thing is that this software is absolutely free, although I do suggest that you give them a donation. Um, what that does is uh, it not only helps the project, but it also it gets rid of a nag screen that comes up when you start up the program. And uh, I, I will be doing that. So what are the downsides of this program? Well, I'll, I'll tell you one thing is the online documentation may not be up to date. I found that, that uh, when I tried to install the software, uh, it, it didn't exactly show the same uh, windows that, that pop up. So I, so I kind of had to figure it out. I'll show you the way that I found to do it at this moment in time. So let's go ahead and download this program and I'm gonna install it on this computer which has not had it installed before. So I'm on the jazzlab.com page, free download. I'm gonna click that one and you'll see some some notes here release notes and all of this kind of thing and then i'm going to be i'm going to be installing on windows so what i'm going to do is go to windows 64 bit okay and this in this case it's uh, version 3.1 okay then i'm going to let that program run Install for all users. Okay, going on the C drive. Jazz Lab. Create a desktop shortcut and install. Okay, now that we've done that, I'm just going to do the launch for Jazz Lab. Now I'm not showing the full screen on this one, but here what it's saying is you can use a Jazz Lab sound font. Now this is recommended, but you have to go and download it. Here I'm going to say yes, recommended. Now in the next page it says that uh, Jazz Lab must be connected to Virtual MIDI Synth MIDI out device. This is not detected. So what you have to do is you have to go to another website and download that, which is no big deal. I'm going to go to this, which is a cool soft altervista.org virtual MIDI synth. And in this website, what you'll find is Here we've got CoolSoft Virtual MIDI Synth, and this is version 2.12.5. And I'm going to click on this one, and it says preparing the file download. So at this time, I did not close the other software. I just left it open. And uh, you can see now it's just downloading that. So I'm going to try and run that program. 
Okay, now what it says here is Windows protected your PC. Now, I'm trusting this program, so I'm going to go to More Info. So I'm on Windows 10, and it says uh, the app is by CoolSoft. The app is called CoolSoft Virtual MIDI Synth. And I'm going to take the risk and say Run Anyway. Okay. And continue. Just say next. It's going to install the program there. Okay, install. Okay, next. I'm just going to say next. So this has finished. So I'm actually going back now to the to the installation of Jazz Lab. I'm just going to say next. Okay, then it says download the Jazz Lab sound font. So we need to download the sound font .sf2. So I'm going to come back to the website, go back to Jazz Lab sound font. All right? So Jazz Lab sound font is right here. All right, so this is on the same page where I got the original program. So you just scroll down and sound font SF2. All right, and here it is. So it says download, and it's going to be 340 megabytes. Click on that one. Okay, so that's finished downloading, so I'm going to go and um, let's click on this one. And I'm going to put this in a place where I'm going to actually take this file and put it in a place where I, uh, where I want to keep it. Now that that's done, let, let's take a look. Uh, let's go back to the installation again. And uh, what I'm going to do is... I'm going to uh, continue with with the uh, CoolSoft Virtual Synth. Now, what we need to do now is to add that sound font to this. So I'm going to click on the on the plus sign. I'm going to open that file since I put it in the new location, and you'll see that it loads itself into this CoolSoft Virtual MIDI Synth. I'm just going to say apply. I'm not sure that does anything, but I'm just going to say OK on that one. So this is actually what it told us to do in the instructions here in the installation of Jazz Lab. So, so I'm going to go to the next one. And it says, if you click Finish, the following changes will be applied. Set Output Synth Configuration Finish. OK. All right, so this is Jazz Lab. Now here's a song that I created on, on another computer. I'm going to open this and let's see what happens. These are some chords that that I created. So this is just a quick demonstration of how sound, how uh, Jazz Lab works. Let's let's hope it does work. So what this is showing here is that this is going, it's going to go through the intro, and it's going to play the A section, and there are one, two, three, four variations of that, and then it's going to play the bridge, which is from here to the end, and then it's going to go back and play the A section again. Now, I'm, I'm not finished with this, but this is what I've got so far. Let's see if it plays. I haven't, I haven't tested this on this computer yet, so let's see if it, it works. Now I can hear that this is, has got a problem with the sound font, because it's playing, I can hear piano sound instead of the, instead of a, the drum. So I'm going to stop that and let's see if we can set up the uh, the correct sound font. So, all right. So, what I'm going to do here is this is the missing step. What you need to do is go into Tools, Options, and where it says MIDI Out Device, now there's a uh, Virtual MIDI Synth, and I'm going to say OK on that one. All right. Now let's see what the difference is when we play this. Now you hear the difference. 
So now it's using the sound font. So just take a look here at how this is operating. You see that this down below, this is the uh, these are the sections. So it's now this is now playing. And then it moves to the next one. So you can follow along with this. You so you can follow along and and see see where you are. Now notice how it varies each part because these ha this has built-in uh, variations that you can select. Now I'm going to stop this right here just with the space bar and I'm going to just show you what happens when we select another another one of these uh, styles. So what you do is you go to the first uh, this is where the let's see I'm going to make this a little bit wider. So if you click on on where it's showing where the sections are I'm going to click on that one and then it opens up. This is now select. I'm now selecting from one of the the uh, the Yamaha jazz styles that comes built into the system already. You can download more and load more, but uh, I'm just using one of those and I'm just going to try and select another one, which is let's see. Let's just try this uh, funk funk pop rock style. Uh, I believe that might be the one that I originally started with. So I'm going to click on that one and then let's play this again and we'll we'll hear what the difference is here. So you can see it's a completely different style but it still has its own sets of variations. We'll see when it comes around. It's coming up to the end of the, the first section. Now it comes up with a little bit different style. So this is a really cool program. I'm gonna, I'm gonna be doing some more with this. Now you find that they do have great documentation. Uh, you can go to YouTube and, and, and watch their tutorials, but one thing that I found is that it's a little hard to, to, uh, to follow because it's in French and you have to follow the subtitles. So it's kind of difficult that you're trying to follow what's on the screen as well as uh, the subtitles. So I'm gonna try and see if I can help that situation in the following weeks. I think I'm going to be posting something on, on how, to, how to use this in English. So if you find this useful, give me the thumbs up. And if you want to hear more from me, uh, please subscribe to the channel and you get informed whenever I put something new out. So from me right now, I'd like to say stay tuned and look forward to seeing you soon.